Shut up and sit down. Welcome to Lonely Mountains Downhill, an awesome new game I'm checking out today from Megadon Industries out of Berlin. This game started as a Kickstarter project at just over two years ago, and it is releasing on October 23rd, 2019 today for PC, Linux, Mac, PS4, and the Xbox One. Uh, no support for Switch at this moment, but man, let's take a look at this thing. I just love the look of it. It is a low poly, uh, you know, graphical game. It, it just suits this game so much. Um, there's three, three mountains open to me right now that I've unlocked. I believe there is four in total. There is also six bikes that you can ride and you can you have to unlock those through various challenges on the different trails. Uh, each mountain contains, uh, from what I've seen, at least four trails and there's various ways to get down. Uh, it's so much fun, but look at the look of this game. Just the it's a considered a low polygon game, but just the aesthetic of it. Um, oh, it's just so nice. It's so fun. So basically, the goal of this game is it's just you, your bike, and the mountain. You need to get down the mountain as fast as possible without crashing. You can find hidden spots, some Easter eggs that they've thrown in from I, I saw one from a, a quote from a, one of the Kickstarter uh, supporters. And just the atmosphere, just the atmosphere of this game. I love it. It's just, uh, you know, the nice little soundtrack. There's no music, just the sounds of nature and uh, the sounds of your bike going down this mountain. And crashing is a big part of this game. And believe me, you will crash a lot. And I mean a lot. And the crashing is just part of the experience, you know, trying to learn this mountain. Uh, oh, geez. Finding all these hidden paths, uh, you see them just on the side of the, uh, the hill and you're just looking at them and, oh, you're just like, where was that? Where will that one go? Is it faster? Sometimes you'll get off actually uh, some of the courses on the mountain, each mountain. Uh, again, there's multiple courses. I believe that they overlap each other. Um, you can get off course sometimes. Oh, geez. And you can do this however you want. See that? I just turned around and <laughs> good thing I didn't crash into that tree. So I feel this game is very easy to pick up. It's going to be very hard to master. So there are two different uh, control schemes in this game. The first one is uh, the default. You control based on the screen orientation. So if you think the rider needs to go right, you're going to hit right. But if he's facing away from you, uh, you're going to be hitting the opposite way on your, your thumbstick. Uh, so the other, the other option is kind of, I forget what they're calling it, but I call it the RC car way. Um, I raced a lot of RC cars. Uh, in my life and th that option was just more easy for me where you're always controlling the rider uh, right or left based on the way they're going not on the screen orientation uh, so definitely check try the different uh, control schemes see which one works better for you for you uh, again I think the I'm calling it the RC car controller way works way better uh, my mind just works that way though from training I'll just see these little paths you can try to find. Oh, it's just so cool. It's just so cool. So each checkpoint, you can uh, hit it. You can crash as many times as you want, and your your times will still count uh, on the leaderboards. Some of the challenges, though, to unlock uh, parts for your bikes, uh, I think you have to unlock six parts for a bike to unlock the whole bike uh, besides this default one. Some of these challenges require you to not crash a certain amount of time or finish the course in a uh, within a certain amount of time. 
Uh, some of them are super fast, so you, you are going to have to practice. Like, to get to this end right here, the camp, there was like three different ways you could have went. Uh, very cool. So that was the first mountain, uh, the Greater Horn Trail 2 that I just did. And we can see 13 crashes. That was one of the challenges I did not, did not clear. Now we're taking at Redmore Peaks. This is the second mountain in the game. Very cool color palette, kind of a fall, fall looking. Uh, leaves are falling off, turning orange. Fall colors, very pretty. Has some nice water features coming up also very soon. But just again, the the sounds, the soundtrack of this game, there is no, there is no music. It, it just, I, when I was playing it, I was thinking, you know, this is kind of like, uh, uh, Zen mountain biking or something, you know, it's just you out there in the wilderness. Uh, you can kind of just, per this would be a perfect game to just zone out, <laughs> play once in a while. Uh, you know, yes, it still has that challenge, but, but it's almost like therapeutic playing this game. It, it's, it's kind of strange. Like I said, it's just, uh, you know, the, the, the sounds. The crashing. The crashing is even fun in this game. Usually you get pissed, but uh, the crashing, like I said, is, is how you learn this game. Um, and there's no real penalty for crashing other than trying to get the challenges with, uh, within a certain crash limit. And the crashes are just awesome when they happen. So the controls again are very simplistic. Uh, again, like I said, there's two different control schemes. You have the uh, right trigger though is your pedal. Uh, left trigger is the brakes. And on Xbox at least, the A button uh, is the sprint. So that green bar at the top is the stamina stamina gauge that shows you, uh, you know, how much sprint you have. Uh, so you can hold it for a little while. You usually will need it when you are uh, trying to clear some huge gaps. And this default bike that we're on, uh, I think it's... Uh, oh, I want to say it's the Cheetah. I don't know if it is or not. I think I have the Cheetah outfit on. Uh, but... It reminds me, it's like the Walmart mountain bike, uh, <laughs> the design of it. It looks like an old mountain bike, you know, full suspension mountain bike. I, I call it the Walmart bike. And uh, the the other bikes in the game, they are, they have different attributes. Like there's like a fully, fully downhill one. Uh, there's actually a rigid, uh, rigid frame one. Uh, there's even a bike with drop bars. It's kind of like a cyclocross. Uh, or a gravel bike. Uh, let's see what else. Anyways, it just there's a few bikes that have different different characteristics. Uh, some are better for drops. Some are better for turning. Better speed. Uh, so you probably do want to use them on different trails, um, or if you're attempting different routes down the mountain. Again, this low poly look, it it just works so well with this game. Uh, we don't, you know, you don't need a uh, ultra realistic looking graphics for this this type of game. I I just love these. Ah, over the bridge. So I think, whoa, I, I'm trying down this, this way. I believe every, oh, end out on that rock. I want to say each trail has six or seven waypoints, uh, checkpoints to hit. And if you miss a checkpoint, it is possible to miss a checkpoint. Uh, you can actually get to the other checkpoints, but they are not active. Um, so I'm pretty sure I've never been able to get all the way down the mountain by missing a checkpoint and getting to the finish line. I've always crashed before that happened. So I'm not entirely sure if you need to hit every checkpoint. I'm pretty sure that you do though, because on the 
the finish, it shows your times for each checkpoint, and that adds you up to the for the leaderboards. I think you they even have uh, leaderboards for each checkpoint. I believe it marks you at what your rank is. There we go. That's the second Redmore Peaks Trail One. All right, the third mountain, the Sierra Rivera. And again, at that, like you saw right there at the beginning of the trail, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to go down the default, you know, the marked, what looks like the obvious trail. Uh, I finally figured that out. I was like, hey, what if you turn around right at the beginning? I cut off a lot of time right there. This is a great looking, great looking trail system here. It is just, you know, we're out in the desert, how oh, tons of rocks you can, you can take all kinds of different, uh, routes on this one also. Doing some cliffside riding. And actually, I believe this game is only $19.99. Uh, so again, my first impressions, um, I don't even need to do a full review on this. My first impressions of this game after playing probably one to two hours. I mean, this is a solid buy for me. Uh, you know, even when I saw the just the trailers for it a couple weeks ago uh it, it was already i was already wanted it um you know i'm all for these little little indie games like this oh you know and i i already i am mountain bike in real life and uh i just i just love the little touches that they have on some of this stuff like the little cross-ups he does when he does the gaps like that uh you can you can choose a female female character uh, so that is nice also for the ladies or the guys that like to ride as female characters. I like to play as female sometime also in some games. Whoa, it's it's all oh, these the massive downhills when you get on them when you're trying to control your ugh, trying to control your uh, oh geez cactus got me. And again, on this Walmart bike, you have to be careful. You can, you can bottom out the suspension and you will definitely crash. Uh, so I cannot wait to unlock all the other bikes. Uh, so I need to put in some time, try to beat all of those challenges. Oh, that looks so nice right there. Yeah, so guys, again, I, I recommend picking this up for $19.99, Xbox One, PS4, PC, Mac, Linux, no we uh, no Switch yet. Uh, again, $19.99 is definitely worth it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hey, if you're not subscribed already, please consider doing so now. It helps me out a ton. Leave me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you guys thought about this game. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks a lot, guys.